every man has elastic limit. But if you are functioning from God, you don't have an elastic limit. Your limit is as the limit of God. So, the only way to escape breaking apart or breaking away when you are engaged in intensity is to stand in God and stretch in Him. So, at the time that you are feeling the pain, He pats you at your back and says, Daughter, you can do better. You can do more. Father, we thank you. We give you all praise, Jesus. We thank you for your plans for our lives. We thank you for your hands that is upon us to do. Thank you for the mighty power that raised your son from the dead. I thank you for the same power and the same spirit that is dwelling within us to quicken our mortal body. Father, we appreciate you. Lord, we pray that you will reveal yourself to us once again. We ask that the power of your word will penetrate our being. It will change us in and out by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Can you rejoice and scream glory? Wow. By the grace of God, this is the last Sunday in the month of February. Just like yesterday, the way February is flying, it's not small. <laughs> so before we close our eyes and open it, we'll be in March. And then we'll be in December. You know, I, I still remember vividly when we gathered here and we were shouting up in the air. Welcoming ourselves to New Year's. It's strange. You, you, you see what is coming to my spirit now? Is that we need divine kind of speed in our lives. Because if not, we will not be able to cash up the divine prophecies upon our life. That is it. For us to be able to run and cash up with divine prophecies. There is a need for us to leverage on the divine strength and empowerment by the Spirit. So we've been looking at intensity and so this, this subject matter is so important right now. It's so it's in alignment with the season. Intensity. And then if you have been following we considered intensity from different perspectives and then we later narrow it down, pin it down to intensity in Christianity and then emphasis on the intense love of God and how that as believers we are not going to perform more than the understanding of the love of God that we have in every area of our life. So if you are saying, well, are you saying I need to understand the love of God to make money honestly? Honestly, do you know there are some people who are okay with poverty, and they are okay with poverty because it's okay, they are balanced. Even let's assume they are not hungry, they are balanced, seeing people around them struggling. <laughs> but if the love of God consumes your heart and you appear in class, maybe as a teacher, and then you look at three students, you are chasing them out of class because they don't have school, food. and then you look at their uniform, one shot in the bonbon. And then they did like this. Everybody in class making jest of them. And then, as a teacher, you are okay with that. You look at even if there is, are you talking, if you don't have me, let's assume that is all you see all around you. If you are okay with it, there is no love in your heart. There, is, there are things you see. There is a level of this love that you encounter, and you say no to poverty. You will say with all of your being, not because of what you want to eat, but because you know it that there are a lot of destiny depending on you being blessed with heavenly resources. You just think of what things, like the kind of things you can do within your head as you are listening to me if you have abundance of blessings flowing in your life. Imagine the things you can do. 
So a, a man who is caged in poverty will be limited in so many areas. And that man can agree with it if his vision is small. That man can agree with it if he's not seen as God is seen. Because a man who is trying to be wealthy on selfish basis, on the basis of his selfishness, is more in his thinking. Because how much do you want to eat? How many clothes do you want to wear? How many houses do you want to build? How many cars do you want to own? Are we together here? No. But if you can see as God is seen, there are things you have now that you know, no, no, this one is nothing compared. You know the prayer of Paul in Philippians said that your God shall supply all your needs according to his what? Not, uh, not according to your labor, not according to what you have in your bank account, according to his riches in glory. You imagine his riches in glory. There is no you can comprehend the richness of the glory of God if you can't comprehend the intensity of his love towards you. Are we together here? May I also tell you that if all you have been doing is predicated on your self-love, you don't love yourself. No! You can't love yourself enough. In fact, the height of your self-love can only be measured by the height of the understanding of the intense love of God. So you can't love yourself more than you love your God. In fact, the, the love, the little love you have for yourself is predicated on your understanding of the very love of God. So no man can clearly and effectively lavish love on himself if he has not received the love of God. And by the reception of his love, you pour out love back to him. In doing this, self-love increases. And then if there can be increase in self-love, there can be increase in your commitment. There can be increase in intensity in what you do. Have you ever looked at yourself and you, you just look at yourself and you, know, you hate yourself because you, if you can be honest with yourself, 90% of the wars and the battles you are fighting is not from the devil, it's from you. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. If I even before the devil we attack a man, he needs his permission. If you are born of God, before the devil can take a place in your life and sit down there, you must have granted him an opening. And then you can't tell me that you love yourself so much to hang where you are. You can't. So if you feel well, must we go to church to be who we want to be? I'm telling you, maybe. You need to come and die in church if that is what will help you to see the intense love of God. Because you can't, you can't speed up more than this understanding. You can't. You can't. You can't labor effectively if you don't understand this love. So if you say you love, if you are here, you love yourself, wave your hand to Jesus. And some people don't love themselves. We all love ourselves. But if with the love you have for yourself, you have failed yourself over and over again, then yeah, this your love is not enough. Are we together? Or am I the only one? Have you ever planned before that, okay, you were going to pray because you think your destiny needs that or depends on that. You were going to pray by 12 a.m. and then you set your alarm and the alarm is ringing with your own hand. You, you are you like... Not that something carried you in the spirit or in your dream. You woke up, the alarm you set to wake you up so that you can dig in destiny. The thing ran, and then you, oh, come, on, I've done it before. I know you are innocent. I've done it before. That you just, you, if I, you even open your eyes, you will use your eyes to look for it. And keep up, you keep sleeping. And then you are looking for a body food you are here. And then you pick it, and then you press the, the red button. And then once you are sure, okay, it's not sandy, you can put it on that video. And then continue. Then you are now up, you are like, ah, but then move pay no more. You woke up, it was a conscious effort. You set up plan to dig the well of greatness. And then what you said should remind you, rank. You use your own hand to hold it. 
You don't know what you have done. You thought you off your phone. No, you, you off certain part of your life. Oh, come on. Uh, you think, uh, maybe I said it now, I, I didn't offend anybody. That is the problem here. Because you feel well, it's my life. It's my, because if you understand the intense love of God, there is a way you know, there is a way you, if not for the love you have for yourself, but for the kind of relationship and fellowship between you and your God, you want to stay and say, no, I've said this, I will do it. And it's if you don't respect yourself, if you respect God so much, if you don't love your life, there is a way you respect God so much and you keep to your prayer time. Are we together? And then you look and say, no, I can't tell God I'm coming by 12. And then he's waiting for me. There are men like that. Yes, there are men like that. Not that the alarm is even ringing and then you look at it and you hope it. You see, what you did is not just about the fact that you are tired. It's more of how you perceive God. Are we together? Look, if you say, I'm going to pray by 12 p.m. or by 12 a.m. And then, let me set up my alarm. I want this alarm to wake me up. And then you are weird. That the God you want to pray to is even a weird. He's, he's there before you. And that he's waiting for you. You can't see God standing in your room. Waiting so that you can converse. And then the alarm is ringing. Helping you to connect to him. And you still hold the phone and you press it. And then you put it under the door and you continue. You can't even do that to, to your brother, younger brother. He will walk up to you and say, Auntie, you said we should meet by 12. You are still sleeping. He will wake you up. It, it, it's, it's more of our perception of it. If we don't perceive his word, his love, right, we cannot perceive ourselves right. And the best we will do for ourselves is to arm us over and over again. It has happened to me before. If it has happened to you, you are going to load your head as I'm speaking. Have you been preparing for exam before when you were in school? And then you still have certain places to cover. And each time you carry the book, you don't know, you don't know where that breeze is blowing from. You want to connect to the book, you are disconnected. You want to do everything in your capacity to read, but what is coming to you at that time is the, is the capacity to speak. And some of us, we have done it before. We will leave the book. I say, we will go to bed. <laughs> and then sleep. Then CCM, you are up. Ah, Moku. <laughs> you will not carry the entire textbook. You will not bring it from back to front. From front, confused. That is where you will now be calling Holy Ghost fire. Lord, I will be not fail. Because there is a way you perceive failure before you even write exam. That kind of thing supervises. And then we say we love ourselves. No. You'll be going to the to the example with your leg cross you are, you are like God. Feeling failure, sweating before handling your paper. And there is this part of you that will stay awake and consume and consume and consume over and over, over and over before exam. And this you that we enter into and say, let the lecturer come from anywhere. And then you see the paper and then you smile. You pick number one, number two. Those are the ones you want to attend to. And then you see that you are just. And they're pushing him beside you. Who oh, don't like good life? But you know what produces that? It's nothing but intensity. And that intensity will obviously be predicated on your self-awareness. That sponsors self-love. You see this kind will not make you stand up a day to exam to read. That kind will make you dig from the beginning of semester. You're already making research as to the things that will possibly come out in an examination that you will sit for in three months. Time. But I told you something that see what the devil is leveraging on that makes him pulls us down from coming into the fullness of this is the compartmentalization of our heart. In what a situation where a part of our heart will comprehend the love of God and a part will say no to it. Or if not saying no, a part will be passive about it. Why a part will be active. I said that area of passiveness 
is an advantage for the devil. So it comes in through that area to bring about distraction. Anytime you are thinking of being intense in whatever you do, it comes there and then it pulls you down. It reminds you. Of, oh, come on. Let me, let, let me give you this. Look at me, everybody. Have you been reading before? Anytime you want to read, that something is telling you. And why do you want to read? Don't you see that your room is scattered? It has not happened to you before. Okay, it happened to me when I was in school. Say, don't you see that this place is rough? And then you go there and arrange it. You come back and read. I said, don't you see that you have not taken your place this morning? And then you feel like, I will turn you, how will I be sm smelling? And you, you know, oh, come on. You need your heart to concentrate on this thing. But you can't be thinking of so many things at the same time and gain comprehension. Are we together? Uh, so there is something I used to do there on campus. Uh, immediately I'm up. I will arrange my room. I will arrange the bed. I will arrange everything. And then set up everything. And I'll sit down and read. So if anything is coming, and you know you need to, I will visit the person later. That part of the bed is not well arranged. I'm not sitting on it now. Let it be. Let it see. What the devil is trying to do is to come into your heart and bring about full distraction. And as long as you are distracted, intensity can be a reality in your life. It is not possible. So what exactly is the mission or the reason for emphasis on the intense love of God? The intense love of God as one major assignment in the life of a believer is to spark intensity in the heart of every man. So his love exists to spark the fire or the intense fire of God in our heart. So if that fire can engulf every part of our heart, as the scripture says, you know the Bible says that for God so loved the world he gave, it's because it's whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. And the scripture also says that love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. That is simply an offshoot, an impact of that release of the spark caused by this intense love. So if you don't have it, you don't have it. So there will always be a time that the devil comes to bring distraction to reduce your intensity. At that time, you will have an answer to every question that the devil brings to the table. Do you know that as simple as this thing sounds, many of you would have been successful in a team, but as soon as you lay your hands on it to do it, the devil comes with other areas of your life where you are not doing well. I say, it's okay. This one that you are saying you want to build a nice brand for yourself and keep making money this year. How about us, man? Nobody has even proposed to you as beautiful as you are. And then the one who is laboring on the table to make sure that if, you, know, you are able to fix a part of your life by the grace of God, it will be like water poured into your heart. You just feel down. You will want to agree. It's true. But imagine if it's coming and the love of God overshadows your heart at the time that it's coming. And he says, son, daughter, this one that you are trying to build a nice brand so that you can make money. What about us, man? God already feasted. it. Let's finish this one first. We'll talk about that. If, if possible. That thing I said looks so simple. But do you know that this is what some of you need to enter into your season of victory. So let's consider this from the perspective of, the, of an athlete. So if I'm in a gym center and I'm lifting weight, if there is anything you will be sure of that these guys have as qualities, is that they let go every distraction before that time. In fact, sometimes they can put their phone on flight why? Because they want to. All they are looking at is time. They set time, they set plan, and then they keep picking. If their phone is ringing, they don't, it's not the time to go and pick it. Why? They have target. If they drop that thing, they might not be able to meet up with the plan for the day. So they have the plan that as I lift this thing, there is increase. You know, there, 
what they are looking, you know, what they are waiting for is the intensity. And see, this intensity is what brings out the originality in you as a person. That is where I'm going. I said it earlier, that don't conclude that you can't do a thing if you have not engaged intensity in that. Engage it intensely. Give intensity to it. If you can give intensity to it, and then you are not able to do it, good. Every man has elastic limit. But if you are functioning from God, you don't have an elastic limit. Your limit is as the limit of God. So, the only way to escape breaking apart or breaking away, you understand, when you are engaging intensity, is to stand in God and stretch in Him. So, at a time that you are feeling the pain, He pats you at your back and says, Daughter, you can do better. You can do more. That is why, no matter how far you join in God, you will always meet Him ahead of you. So you are there, he says, so come on. You still have 10 steps to take. And then you're like, God, I'm tired. You can't be tired right now. Can you move forward? Hey, but this one is not working. Yes, you don't need to stay there. Still move forward. But nobody is getting me in this family. It does not matter. Just go on. But nobody is listening to me. I'm a great preacher. No, it does not matter. After all, I'm listening to you. I'm hearing you. Go forward. When the when the <laughs> ayah, may God carry you into a place like this, a place where His love is made so visible and rich to you, and that His love becomes is the driving force for your action. May God take you to that place. Oh, come on, you are not getting me. Say Amen. amen. Say it loud and clear. Amen. What I'm talking about here works in every area of your life. It is applicable in every... I talked about instrument here. That there is a point you, you get to a learning of this thing and then you are just complacent, you are comfortable and then that is the best you can achieve. But if you engage intensity to a point, you have been so comfortable beating in a particular way but there is a point you get to that you beat and your hand will be paining you you know that you are doing something different maybe you have been rolling 10 times before in one minute now you want to roll 20 times in one minute and then if we bring these two to the family life this is what you need to sustain a home not your nice face that's the truth. Nobody is a wish enough to receive the love of God in terms of God and not change. <laughs> I've never seen that wish. Nobody. Nobody. If you can allow yourself to function in God and enlarge, and then you, you know, I thought a message here on elastic limit. Or elasticity in relationship. It, it simply that that message is all about the love of God in expression. That there is no limit. Like you are, you did this, did that, 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 that you engage this, you, and then all you are meeting is an expanded art, always ready to accommodate your flaws, your perfection and imperfection. I'm telling you, you will change. A lot of things will. The, the, not that you will change alone. Not that you will just be gentle. The best of you will come out. The best of you will come out. Intensity provoke the best of us. We die small when we reject intensity. So the intense love of God is to provoke a spark in our heart. And as soon as that spark takes place, our response to show spark is intense fellowship. And this fellowship has two major pillars. It is the prayer and the study of the word. Because of the intensity, the spark of that love in your heart, I'm telling you, you see, there will be your prayer life will come with so much intensity. And I said it on Thursday, that you see, 
One thing that marks a great relationship, a major one, a major sign that you would see and say, oh, this relationship is great, is deep communication. It's intense communication. You did the extra coup here, those days. Can you raise up your hand? Those days, extra coup. Empty and extra coup. You can never do that kind of thing without having something special for the person. If I might not be corrupt, it might just be your friend. You talk and talk and talk. And sometimes 1 a.m., 12 a.m., you are hot. And so people can do it from that 12 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. or 4.30 a.m. Is it it's 12 to 4? Yeah. Why? Because there is a bond. There is something connecting you with that person. So you are talking and gisting and discussing and discussing and discussing and discussing. You that used to say, I don't know anything, 10 p.m., I'm already on my bed. Even if you sleep inside it. But don't you struggle, you will stay awake. What keeps us awake is intense love. When that intensity is out of it, the best you can achieve out of anything is, is a small size of it. May I tell you that you are bigger than this. What God has planted in you, what he has imputed in you at salvation is large. Even your brain can host it. You can achieve it by determination. I'm telling you, you must have a counter with his intense love. And by that encounter, you can sit and engage intensity. Because that encounter instills in you his spirit, his life-giving spirit. And that's why he says that thing. You know, a lot of us, we, told, we used to quote that scripture that maybe it is all about somebody that is sick. And if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from there comes upon you, he said the same spirit shall quicken your mortal body. Yes. The meaning of that is what we are talking about here. The quickening here is that that spirit will drive you to a point of intensity. So, because normally the body wants to always fail you. Especially when you need to do something tangible. The body is interested in failing you, pulling you back. You don't have idea how much of the prophetic destiny you are carrying until you engage intensity in prayer. When you pray to a point, you see, all the med, the med, everything will break apart. You will be refined like gold. And that is the truth. I told you of Benz, that you can't be driving Benz and driving it like this. Small, 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 small. And know the power and the potential in that vehicle. To understand the power and the potential in the vehicle, fire it up. Fire it more. And you fire it more. <laughs> you will now understand that, wow. Wow. So there is so much here. If you feel you can't memorize anything for sure, that all you can do is to memorize just five scriptures, you try 50. You might not be able to hit the 50, but by stretching your brain to accommodate more than five, if you are able to scale through 20, or let's say 30, and you are not able to reach 50, you will never go back to 5 again. Are we together? Mm, that is it. Initially, you were thinking all you could do is just 5, memorizing 5. But when you stretch and you expand your brain by giving yourself, you know, feeding it with more, with more, and you see, it will always look as if you want to die anytime you are trying new things like that. Glory to God. Are we together? Are we together? Come on, are you, can you hear me? So when you pray as a believer, you are not just expected to come always with your need. This is what I need. Though. This is, that is why the love of God must be the, must take the lead. If his love takes the lead, your prayer point will change. If his love takes the lead, you will see the way God is seen. You know, there is, there is, a definition of success to a normal man. And there is also another definition of success to a man who has encountered the love of God. When they stand their prayer, they pray differently. They can be using the same hour, but they pray differently. And I said it on Thursday, that there is, there you can enter into your prayer room 
And then if all you have on your table or inside your notes that you want to pray for are your needs, are the things that you need. You don't need up to you don't need more than 30 minutes to exhaust your prayer. You know, after you have opened the book and you say, Lord, give me good husband. Lord, I need good job. Lord, I need money. Lord, I need this one. You will read it for 30 minutes and then you'll be done reading. But a man carried by the love of God or propelled, invited by the intense love of God to prayer room. <laughs> they pray for a longer time with lesser words. With lesser prayer for. And so they just stay there. And then all you can hear from them, I put you in front, in front of my melody. You are the matters. You are the matters. I make room for two. You and I, Jesus. your prayer room with that kind of song. You know, there are things that can pursue you to prayer room and you don't remember a song like this. If the song is coming, say, yeah, come like song. <laughs> and then you are losing your bed and then open your suit. Oh God! Oh God! Now, anyone who sees you enter the prayer room like that will say, hey, heaven we fall today, three hours in go need that and then under 30 minutes, oh, your oh God will come down because you would have poured out all your heart. Oh, now listen to me. If you have been in love before, raise up your hand. Our mommy will know where no one kill it. No, if you have been in love before, most times you discuss longer with your spouse, even when you don't have something to discuss initially. You know, there are. Oh, you know the discussion that quick that we quickly finish is the one that is purposeful. That you see, uh, we want to talk about our finance in this family, and then you see that under 30 minutes you have exhausted. But the time that she just came back from work and she's just crossing leg on the chair, and then you you are just drinking, you are just taking juice, and then no, no, we call it spontaneous discussion. Yeah, there, there you see that one man today in the place of work. We'll leave that one, we'll go to another one. We will talk. Oh, sometimes, if you are not careful, two hours don't work. You are still there, just no plan. This is what God desires. Not always coming to the prayer room with oh God, oh, and it's like you actually more than this. There is nothing bad about crying to Him when you are in need, but there is a deeper form on this prayer. That we, we must learn to join in with intensely. That not that you have so much, but that you have just you have understanding of this intense love, and then predicated on that, you know, your life, everything, your prayer, everything, your focus is just on that, and then you appear in the prayer room, and then you are lying there. You don't need to rush. Sometimes you don't need to have the right word to say, and then you just get there. You, you journey, you journey. You journey. What is the intensity in this matter? Don't rush out. Because once God engages you on a point like that, he does not want you to go on time. Because at the time that you think you want to go, he moves one scripture to your head. You're like, hey, I'm telling you how God speaks to you in your secret place. Or you might think, I can't hear God. I'm the only one here. You are not the only one. If you are right there and scripture is playing in your heart, God is talking to you. But some of us, we have not engaged intensity. Truly, we, you gain something when you sit for 30 minutes or one hour. But that, for some of us, that one hour is the beginning of the fellowship. And if you can stay more and stay true, one thing you don't know is that if God can stay with you for 24 hours like that. Even two hours, if you, if you allow him. He's hungry for fellowship. And you can't break out of this 10 minute thing, 5 5 minute thing, if you don't engage intensely. You know, that's the idea behind prayer stretch that you see all around. But do you know that a lot of us, we are so funny, and it's not, it's not, it's not our problem. The problem is that we are 
engaging the prayer stretch from a standpoint of a man who, who is determined, who wants to have something, who wants to prove a point. Ah, just six, six hours stretch, no stop. I wish can't play a video kid here. I wish. Because some of you slept 10 hours out of 12 hours. 10 hours. I was in one prayer stretch in Lagos. I've been hearing about this prayer stretch. I was, wow, I can't wait to be here. And I was in the prayer stretch. Truly, certain people are praying. But majority, one hour to the prayer stretch, they just pack plastic here. And then they organize themselves for plastic. I don't know how people can sleep by angry. I've ever seen that kind of thing. <laughs> Where you want to sleep, you lie down. But this one, they sleep by angry. Somebody will stand like this. And then he's gone. <laughs> and then somebody will now pray. I just touch the body. I say, ah. They should go for a share me. That is a determined, you know, you a plan. It's just like a woman, not you are not ready to talk to your husband and he's trying to converse with you. You know that kind of respect. Show Tijan. Yes. Time warning. Anytime. I, I just have met you. Are you going to bed now? Well, I don't know. I'm still here. And she will keep quiet. Until you ask another question, she'll keep quiet. Until you know that something don't stop. So as a wise man, you must look for the right word button and press it. If you don't, that one can continue for three days. And then you are just there playing game. I told you, I said, you see that kind of conversation <laughs> might not be smooth. But then, because you are always together at home, something will always come for it. For instance, if me don't finish for soup, say, uh, so, uh, we need to get some drinks in the house. And that's all. If our son will get to a point and write a note and drop it on the table. Or we we'll go and put it on your pillow and say, uh, so, you will say, I don't want to talk to you. It's, see, if you, are, if you are far from prayer, if, you are, if your prayer life is lagging behind, that is how you are. That is what you are doing with God. How to show, how to test if you are healthy spiritually is to check your prayer intensity. You can live to a point that you are out of the house like this. If, if this thing called love is sweet at all, anybody stepping out between the husband and the wife, the other person will be feeling pain. Bow on bon le. I told you where I was going. Oh God, where did you come? Tell your neighbor, love is sweet. When you do it the right way, the love of God is sweet. When we plug in ourselves, path. There are questions you are asking. There are things you want to know. There are things you really want to understand. But you will never come to this understanding until you engage in intense prayer. Because the whom you love, you really wish to communicate with time to time. If you love him so well, you will give your heart to him in fellowship. May I tell you that all these ones that you are like, uh, I'm looking for a prophet to prophesy to me. And you will know it that you are more than a prophet. The day you plug into that intense prayer dimension and then you press to a point, you will hear God. The reason why is to see you are not hearing God is not because God is not speaking. It's a lot of things have compounded. A lot of things is taking your heart. Is that love the Lord your God with all your heart? How to love my wife with all my heart is that see, I must be able to pour my heart to her without hiding anything. So when I open up, open up, we bond more. Open up, open up, we bond more. Open up, open up, we bond more. There will be serious connection. 
if there is serious communication. And nothing is it, nothing, 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 anything you have received of God, you need God to express it. So God has placed on your inside so much that without him, you can't put to use. So by consistent communication and intense fellowship with him in prayer, you activate those realities. There are things you don't need to pray for. This kind of fellowship will unlock it. And then you will stand and somebody, that has happened to me several times. See people standing in front of you and telling lies. And they lie like they lie, written upon their head. You are seeing it. Lies, 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 lies. It's your spirit picking it. If you don't engage in test prayer, your spirit can't pick signals. It can't, oh my God. And there are things you need to pick if you want your legs to run. So you will then be stagnant and you are around the church throughout this year. If you don't engage in test prayer, I'm telling you. Because what we move not by our legs. Because we are actually going and we are where our heart is. So if your heart can be set ablaze, and this can happen by consistent and effective communication. If I want the heart of my wife to be set ablaze, there are things I know what to do. Sometimes it's beyond just touching her as a woman. No, I just come and start saying certain things. It might not be dead. But I look at her, I communicate deep things about her. I mention those things. Mention those. I, it, it might just be a remembrance. Bringing out a remembrance. I will see that before the evening, the atmosphere around her will change. You can command the atmosphere around your wife. You can dictate it. You can hang her in a miserable world. And believing you are husband, you are, you are, you are demonic. You can anger in a reasonable way. Because communication. All right. You can't fellowship with him at a level like that. Solid communication. And not also want to look into the perfect world of liberty. Because the more intensely you communicate with him, the more urgently you want to know about him. And because he's a deditor, a tutor, the God that cannot be unraveled at once. That son, that, that man who sang the song, he said, Jile, Ninu, Jile. <laughs> It's too deep that you can't unravel him. So how to know that indeed that you are praying is that you feel like praying more. Because the more you communicate, you will know a bit of it. Ah, you, ah, so this man is like this. Let me know more. Let me know more. So when you are pushing back for effective prayer, it shows that you know little about it. So intensity in prayer is sponsored by the understanding of his intense love. And then intensity in the study of word is sponsored by his intense love. And the more of his word you study, the more of yourself you see. Because as you behold him, you are seeing Christ, but indeed you are seeing yourself. Are we together? If you have been blessed, can you wave your hands to Jesus? Wave your hands to Jesus. You can do so. You can do so. You can do so. You can do so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lastly, before we go, on Thursday, we are going to wrap up this teaching. But I don't want you to miss that Thursday. That is more of a practical dimension of this. All of the things we have been talking about on intensity is just majorly on a, the union between Christ and the church. That fellowship, that synergy. That is what we have been looking at. So on Thursday, our emphasis will be on the responsibility of a believer among men. We 
Because whatever it is you think you have achieved via your intensity with him or intense fellowship with him in the spirit, if it can be localized among men, you will only be Baba Fire who is fruitless among men. And that is not the interest of God. So he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and your strength. He said, love thy neighbor as yourself. It's a flow. A flow from him to you and then from you to your world or to the world around you. Hallelujah. So the pillars of fellowship will enable you to unravel all of the possibilities in you. And then once there is unraveling, there will be an ignition of the fire to press forward. So there will be forces that want to reduce your intensity in whatever you do. There will be forces that want to pull down this area of your life, pull down that area of your life. But once the fire is burning perpetually, I'm telling you, I told you, the instrument for the, for the continuous burning of this fire is your pillar of prayer and the prayer of the word. He said, it's my word, not like fire. So when you sit with it, you're born, uncontrollable. And then you are able to deliver maximum. So we will look at that on Thursday. But before that, I want us, before we go, I want us to talk about something. I will just mention it, then we'll pray. I call it the pillar of worship. When you pray to a point, and then you communicate to a point, the full appreciation of the almightiness of God will burst forth on your inside. So true worship is predicated on our understanding of him. And then we can understand him if we are not ready to communicate so deep with him. We can understand him if we are not ready to study his words so deep and intensely. So if at the end of the day, God helps us to journey into this level of intensity and then we gain understanding of him, we will, through worship, we flow like river. Hmm? Hallelujah. Is that clear to you? And you see, you can worship him and not enjoy him. If you can worship him well, you will enjoy him. Our response in worship comes in form of our service to him. It also comes in form of our gathering like this. We are gathered here not because we must be here to meet Jesus. We are gathered here because of his worship. He said unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. He said how good and pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together. In what? In unity. So when we come together like this in worship there will be a view of the auction to function, a flow of the grace to function in this world. There are intensity breakers, intensity destroy. But then if you know this pathway, if you understand this flow, you will be exempted. Can you rise on your feet? Rise on your feet. Help me, Nisa. Help me, Nisa.